In Zimbabwe, health workers have accused the government there of not being transparent with the vaccine rollout, which is currently underway. This has led to a low uptake by some nurses. The Zimbabwe Nurses Association, a union representing more than 40,000 frontline health workers, say myths and myths conceptions shroud the Sinopharm vaccine, which is being administered in that country. News from Africa's Kolasani Ngube joins us now. Kolasani, good afternoon to you. Is there just no information about the vaccine that's being made available? Are people just not being told about it? Good afternoon, Steve, and good afternoon to our viewers back home. Indeed, the government hasn't done much in terms of raising awareness as to the, the issue of the Sinopharm vaccine, especially to do with the side effects, as well as its efficacy in dealing with the variant that was first discovered in South Africa. Many health workers feel like the government is hiding information as to the capability of the vaccine to tackle or to prevent against the, this variant, which was uh, first found in South Africa. So they feel like it is not really important for them to take this, uh, you know, this uh, vaccination seriously. They want the government to talk to them as well as advise them on, on whether they, it is very safe for them to take this uh, sign of vaccine. They want uh, probably more information on who should take it and also who should not take it. We've seen political leaders here being among the first. President Cyril Ramaphosa got vaccinated in the same uh, group at the same time as the first frontline health workers here. Have political leaders in Zimbabwe done the same thing? Well, on the, on the first day, uh, uh, the, the vice president was the, one, or the first one to be vaccinated. But uh, what has been the challenge is that uh, many people believe in as much as the vice president was vaccinated, the information at first which went out is that uh, Quite a number of people, those who have um, a chronic illness, such as uh, you know, tuberculosis, such as uh, a, a BP, as well as uh, HIV and AIDS positive people, are not eligible to be vaccinated using the Sanofan, the Sanofan vaccine. However, government did not move uh, to dispel that notion. And that on its own caused a lot of panic amongst them. Remember, as well as 1.2 million people living with HIV and AIDS. And those people are skeptic as to are they safe to be vaccinated as well as are they no such effect if they get if they get you know the gem uh, after uh, getting the gem so they want the government to move in and explain the technical aspect of the vaccine of, of the vaccine to say they are safe and they can go go ahead and they, um, be vaccinated but government isn't doing that much well, Sunny, I mean, it's such an important issue that as many people as possible get vaccinated against this disease. Uh, how difficult are nurses and frontline healthcare workers finding it to treat people with COVID-19? Do they actually have the resources, the PPEs, the face masks to protect themselves? Well, government is, um, has tried to procure as much as it could afford the, the PPEs and as well as other, your mask and um, the gloves and everything like that. But the challenge has been the price is also, for many health workers, they say that uh, in as much as government say they've procured as much as they could afford, they still remain inadequate to cover the number of people who, who want um, these PPE. We have seen a surge in number of health workers who have died you know, because of uh, uh, being exposed to COVID-19. Quite a number of them have fallen ill uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that, that on its own has also forced the many health workers not to be available or not to allow themselves to attend to many uh, 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 sick people who, are, who would want uh, attention when they fall sick to COVID-19. Here we've seen this pandemic having such a big impact on people, but we know when someone passes, if it was linked to COVID-19 or not. In Zimbabwe, I, I can't imagine that you have the same testing facilities that we and other countries have. Are you finding that many people are seeing relatives pass away without actually knowing whether it's COVID-19? Well, of late, I would say during the peak of the second wave, Zimbabwe experienced what we call community deaths because of uh, lack of testing capacity. Even right now, government isn't testing much. We are talking of um, around 2,000 tests that are being conducted a, a, a day. So, on its own, and most of these tests are being done by private companies you know, on their employees as they, they want to, opt to resume operations. Government isn't doing much because of uh, they don't have enough uh, testing kits. That is also compounded in terms of the number of people who are dying in communities who were later, who later confirmed of having COVID-19 upon or during the post-mortem examinations. This has contributed largely to the community you know, transmissions because the family would at first treat the person to be having a, a common flu or a common uh, fever 
But well, when in fact it is the COVID-19 uh, uh, virus, it is uh, what would affect the person. Kolasani Ngubay in Harare, thanks very much indeed. Really do appreciate it.